Hello everyone, welcome to Cook Me Curves Coding Class. Today, I'm going to show you the basics of JavaScript. JavaScript is a popular language in web development because instead of having stuff just sitting around, you know, text and images here and there, you can actually do stuff. So, to get started, open up a text editor or whatever you prefer to use to write HTML. Ah, text editor, there you are. Okay, now there are two ways to put JavaScript into your HTML. They're both very similar, but they're different. So the first way is make a script tag, script, and then put the JavaScript in here. And close the script tag. I spelled script wrong. There we go. And that would work, but there's another way of doing it that comes in handy if you want to use someone else's script from a different site, which would be adding the source attribute, or SRC, equals path to the file .js. Always end your JavaScript files in, J in .js. And that is how you would do it. So. Instead of doing it the way I normally do to insert other languages into my HTML, I'm going to link it this way. So save this file. I'm going to call it js.html. Put it in this folder. And close this. We're not going to need to edit this file again in the whole video. Open up your text editor again. I'll make a new file. Ah, save and call it js.js or whatever you typed into the src, which if you copied me would be js.js. Okay, now to actually write some JavaScript. So there are things called commands, and commands make the computer do things. So how to write a command is type the command's name, open a parentheses, put whatever values it asks for, the values will be separated by commas, close the parentheses, then put a semicolon. Now this command I used called alert makes a pop-up box and it does not require two values it only needs one so save open up a browser open a new tab in the browser and drag in from your file manager js.html or whatever you called that file hello world look hello is spelled wrong inside of a pop-up box. Basic JavaScript. That is the alert command. Now, what if you want to ask a question with JavaScript? There's a command for that. It's called prompt. Prompt do you like waffles? this is what it will ask you and then put a comma and this is the default thing that will be in the text box that it will give you yes they are the best save refresh in the browser and then it's asking me do I like waffles and no, I don't think they are the best. I think they are the best. -est. They are the bestest! With more exclamation marks! I, I really like waffles. If you don't like waffles, that's a problem. Okay, it asked me a question. I answered the question. But we can't do anything with that answer yet. This is where the variable comes in. The variable. 
is a way to store data so that you can come back to it later when you need it. It looks like this var variable name, so answer equals and then whatever you want it to equal. It could be a boolean like true or false. It could be a string like I kind of like flying. Or it could be a number like 226. And make sure that your strings are inside of quotation marks but nothing else is. And then, of course, there would be a semicolon at the end. Okay. So to put the answer to the question into a variable, we would do this. We would take var answer equals, get rid of it here, and put it on the first line where we prompted. Now, var answer equals prompt, do you like waffles, comma, yes, they are the best. And what that does is it stores your answer in the variable called answer. So, save this, reload in Firefox. Do I like waffles? Yes, they are the best. Est, with more exclamation marks. Okay, we have a variable. The answer is stored in that variable. Now, what can we do with the answer? Well, I'll show you how to find the value of a variable. It's very easy. So, alert, because this is how I'm going to display what your answer was. And just do answer where the value is required. You don't have to put it in quotes or anything. It's just answer. Save, or whatever the variable is called. Open up your browser, refresh. Yes, they are the bestest in the earth. And now it repeats my answer back to me. But it just seems like it's a parrot. It's weird. So, to make it less parrot like, we're going to have it say, Your answer was and then what your answer was. That's very simple. All you have to do is your, in quotes, answer was space, actually colon, proper grammar, space, quote, plus answer. And I will add an R right here. Save this, open up your browser, and refresh, Yes, they are the very best. Your answer was, yes, they are the very best. Yay. Okay. But now, let's have it interpret the answer. This is where the if statement comes in. The if statement lets you do different things depending on things. So it looks like this, if, and then in parentheses, what you want, what you will, how do I explain this? What, if is true, you will do something with. So if, answer, dot, includes, in parentheses, and in quotes, yes, then if the answer includes yes, it will do whatever I put inside of these curly brackets. If answer dot includes yes, alert, you are cool because you like waffles. I spelled waffles wrong. That's okay. Semicolon at the end of the line close the curly brackets, and then else. What else does is, if that is not true, else alert 
you are not cool because you don't like waffles. Close quotes, close parentheses, semicolon at the end of the line, close the curly brackets, semicolon. And that is an if-else statement. Save this, open up your browser, refresh, answer the question, best oost. Your answer was, yes, they're the best oost. Okay. You are cool because you like waffles. Yay, it worked. But wait. What it's doing here is checking if it includes the string yes with a capital Y. What if I don't capitalize my answer if I just go, yes, they are the best. Okay, your answer was yes, they are the best. You are not cool because you don't like waffles. What? I said yes. We can fix that problem using or in an if statement. There are and and there's or, so or looks like these two things that you make when you hold shift and backslash. Backslash is next to plus or equals. Two of them. Or answer dot in dot includes. You have to repeat the thing each time with the slight differences that includes yes so now if it's capitalized or if it's not capitalized it'll still work okay and then there's also and and looks like two and signs so if I had the word yes and the word yes but not capitalized in my answer if I had them both that would activate but if it's only the two things, these things, it'll do or. So I'll save, open up the browser, refresh. Do I like waffles? And no, I'm not going to capitalize this. And your answer was yes, they are the best. You are cool because you like waffles. Yay, it interpreted. That worked. Now what if... You wanted to do well what if you wanted to have more than one if within the same if statement you can do that too you can do as many else ifs it looks like this else if and then do ah do and then do and then what that does is if it's not this if it's, if it's not, either of these isn't true, then it will first check if whatever's in here is true before saying you are not cool. If none of those things are true. So if answer dot includes maybe or Answer dot includes maybe but capitalized, then it will alert alert you might be cool because maybe you you like waffles you might be cool because maybe you like waffles save pop open the browser refresh and then I'm gonna say maybe maybe not your answer was maybe maybe not you might be cool because maybe you like waffles which is very much true so yeah, hopefully you learned something from this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out Kid Z down here in the bottom right corner of the screen. 
He's a vlogger. He's pretty cool.